The first Mario Maker was a love letter to the franchise, a celebration of the Red Plumber's long history and his many adventures, with quite a few fun cameos thrown in as an added bonus. You could craft stages in the style of almost any Mario game, and with that freedom came mechanics and stages that really tested the player's skill and determination. Fans wanted the game to be ported to Switch so that many more people could experience the technical achievement that this game was. However, Nintendo did one better. They crafted the sequel with even more mechanics and tools to give players even more ways to torment and torture their friends. Let's dive into Super Mario Maker 2 and see if it stands up to its predecessor. What is happening? Matt Maid here, bringing you my review of Super Mario Maker 2. Super Mario Maker 2 has something the first game didn't, an actual story mode. Yes, it's pretty bare bones and only is there to help you familiarize yourself with controls, but hey, it exists. The story starts off with a dog, man's best friend. This one right here, destroying Peach's new castle with a reset rocket. Why was there a reset rocket so close to the castle? Who knows? Why is Peach building a new castle? They don't say. However, this mutt right here hits the button and destroys the castle in its entirety. Now, since the Toads blew the entire budget on building the castle, Mario has to go whore himself out to whoever he can in order to dredge up the money needed to rebuild. All the while, the little jerk who blew up the castle in the first place is just chilling there like nothing happened and it's not his fault. Each section of the castle has a cost and you must take on levels to get enough coins for the Toads to start rebuilding. Once you have enough coin, you can then talk to Toadette and they begin construction. You, however, cannot build more than one wing at a time, and man, does that slow the game down. You have to build section by section, and oh my god, is that a toad working by himself? Who is running this operation? This is the most inefficient way to build I have ever seen. The others are just sitting there watching him do all this work. It must be a union job or something. Aside from the clearly problematic management, you have to go and do jobs in order to progress the building, which isn't terrible aside from the fact that if you have enough coins to build multiple sections, you have to go to other jobs to fill the completion gauge. It's all very tiresome and tedious. However, the stages are pretty fun, so it's not as bad as it could be. Mario Maker 2 has quite a few new mechanics. You have switches, hills, bonsai bills, Manu mixtape, Super Mario 3D World levels, and all sorts of other things thrown in. They really looked at the first game and thought about how to improve every aspect of it. The controls, as always, are tight and responsive. Mario behaves like he would if he were in the different games. Spinning on thwomps and flying through the air with his cape all feel like they did way back when when you popped the cartridge into the console, though they do take some getting used to. If you haven't played a side-scrolling Mario game in a while, then you'll be tripped up at first due to just how different each one is. Going into Mario 3D World, you have to remember that you can long jump and wall jump, and the fact that it's not 3D. While in Super Mario World, you can't. You have your run and can spin on thwomps and certain other enemies. As you play and familiarize yourself with each game's mechanics, things get a lot more fun and you can pull off some pretty cool maneuvers. The level creator is in-depth and fantastic. You will miss the Wii U gamepad as having the game docked forces you to use the controller, which isn't the best when you're trying to be precise and build a level that will torment people. That and having a stylus was wonderful. You can spend hours upon hours working on a level, fine tuning and spacing things so that those who play it need to be very precise and always on their toes. As always, you need to beat the stages prior to being able to upload them in order to prove that they are beatable and not just full of crap. New to the game is the ability to have clear conditions, things that players do or not do before getting to the flag in order to beat the level. One of the most frustrating and counterintuitive conditions is to not jump for the entire stage. This has to be one of the worst, most aggravating clear conditions in the game. If you leave the ground for any reason, it's considered a jump and you fail. Walk too far over and accidentally fall off that ledge, fail. Move off that Monty Mo a bit too early and fall two centimeters, guess what? You fail. This is a platformer. Jumping is the name of the game. Taking away the ability to do so makes the stage just not fun. 
Another new mechanic is the ability to create a level with a friend. Just pass them a Joy-Con and you're off to the races, making devious and tricky levels with your twisted minds. Or, you know, don't, as others have to play the levels and do want to enjoy themselves. There's also the addition of tutorial and help videos for those who are new to creating levels. These tutorials go over everything, from the basics and how to navigate the creator, to level design and how to make sure players don't get lost. It's very detailed, and if you already own the game but haven't gone through it, I highly encourage you to. They may very well give you some ideas. Also, the teachers are sassy and kind of funny. Super Mario Maker 2 introduced multiplayer modes. You can either play against others or work together in order to get to the end of the level. This goes one of two ways. You are either blitzing through the stage, taking down anyone who gets in your way, or you're getting stomped like a Goomba in World 1. There is no in-between. As the multiplayer relies on four different people coming together through the magic of the internet, there are bound to be some hiccups. At times, the connections were fantastic and you barely noticed any lag or stuttering. Other times, it was rough to say the least. The delay was so bad during a few of the games that your timing is completely thrown off and you fall to your death constantly. The added difficulty of ducking and dodging other players or helping each other to get to the end of the stage is a breath of fresh air. The co-op has a voting system. We can choose how difficult you want the stage to be. If it's a 2-2 split, then it picks between the two at random. This makes it known what your ally's skill level may be and what they feel they can do. Or they just want to have a good time and not try too hard. Also in co-op is the ability to revive near your ally. If you were in the middle of the level and die, you don't have to start the level all the way over. You can just respawn near an ally who's either in front of you or was a little bit behind you and keep going from there. It's a nice little touch and is very thoughtful. The one gripe I have with the multiplayer, and this isn't even a huge gripe, is that you can get totally screwed over by your allies or enemies. As this is a Mario game, you all can interact with each other at any point in time. So if you're trying to do a jump and an ally accidentally jumps on your head, guess what? You're going straight down. If an enemy does it, I'm not too surprised because they want to be in front. I know this has to happen as you need to work together in some instances or try to get past a person in another instance. However, it was annoying at times because like I said, you could just get pushed straight into your grave. It's something you definitely have to remember and keep in mind when playing multiplayer modes. The music goes hard, which it should since it's a mashup of most of the Mario games. You can throw any Mario track into any stage. If you pick a different game's music, then an icon pops up when you start, letting you know which console that music is from. It's odd that they didn't put the game logo, instead opting to put just the console's logo. Weird flex, but okay. As people get used to the new functions and have time to think, the stages will only get more complex and interesting. The ability to set wind conditions to stages on top of all the other new mechanics make this a must play if you're a fan of platformers or Mario. From the added features and mechanics to the time, effort, and the care that went into building the stages for the story mode, you will enjoy yourself from the moment you insert this cartridge. And hey, who doesn't want to torture their friends and people online with a difficult stage that you can cook up? But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you played Super Mario Maker 2? Are you enjoying it? Do you enjoy watching it? Let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget, if you're a fan of gaming, consider striking that subscribe button. This is Matt Made, and I will see you in the next video.